بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على خاتم الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد All praise are due to Allah Lord of the worlds and may peace and blessings be constantly sent to our beloved Prophet Muhammad to his family, his companions and all those who call to his way to the day of judgment As to what follows Alhamdulillah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank Allah over and over again for the blessings of being Muslim in the month of Ramadan. The blessings of being able to review our lives, to be able to have a new start, and to be able to prepare ourselves for the rest of the year and for the trials and temptations in front of us. Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 185, A'udhu Billahi min rajim شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا النَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ The month of Ramadan is that time in which the Qur'an was revealed as a guidance to humanity and clear evidence from the guidance and from the furqan, from that which separates truth from falsehood. So the key issue that comes in in the month of Ramadan is in the beginning revelation. That Ramadan is the time of tanzil. It is the time of al-wahi. It is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicated for the final time directly with humanity. This is the essence of the month of Ramadan. It is the great blessing that Allah has given to humanity. Imagine the creator of the heavens and the earth just let us take ourselves with our small minds through the heavens, through the earth, outside the atmosphere of the earth. Let us travel past the sun, outside of the universe, to other universes, outside of these universes. And if we go above the seven heavens, above the arsh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us tiny, tiny creatures in his kingdom. Allah has given his kalam. His words have come to us. Expressions that we as insignificant human beings are able to get the benefit of in the month of Ramadan. So is, this is a time of greatness. This is a time of mercy. This is a time when the infinite divine being has given a communication to simple, humble beings on the face of the planet Earth. But we should recognize that in relationship to this Qur'an, we need to remember always that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, suffered when this Qur'an was revealed. That in climbing uh, to the mountain, and going into the cave, and then having the angel Jibreel alayhi salam come to him, it was an amazing event. It was a frightening event. And when he returned off the mountain, he shivered and his wife Khadija radiallahu anha covered him up and informed him that, no, you are a good man. And she confirmed him in this time. And this revelation was imprinted in his heart. It was imprinted in his mind. And he read to us, he recited to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had imprinted in his very being. And so this began the final revelation. And it happened in the month of Ramadan. We need to consider our sincerity to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to consider our relationship with Kalamullah al Munazil ala Muhammad sallallahu We need to consider a rounded and balanced approach to the Quran in this month. Many of the great scholars have looked at this text and sincerity to the text in three ways. One, Tahseen tilawatihi, two, tadabbur ayatihi, and three, itba awamirihi. The first level or the first basis of the relationship is tahseen tilawatihi, which, which is to beautify its recitation. And this beautification comes within the uh, tajweed, the tartil, and how we are trying to read it in the way that the angel Jibreel alayhi salam revealed it to the Prophet ﷺ. So we beautify the recitation with uh, the elongation of the letters in the way that the Prophet ﷺ made them long. We also 
intonations. We also pr pronounce the Arabic letters in the way of the original Arabic speakers. This gives us the beautiful revel revelation and recitation as done uh, by the Prophet ﷺ and given by the angel Jibreel ﷺ. So Tahseen Tilawatihi is the beginning. But that's not the end in itself. Next, as we are reciting it beautifully, and we go to the masjids and we listen to the Qurra who are reading the Qur'an, we listen to the beautiful recitation, we play uh, tasjilat, we, we put in uh, tapes of beautiful readers of the Qur'an, and we feel so good inside when the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is given to us, the sound and non-Arabic speaking people even get some type of pleasure out of just hearing kalamullah, just the beautiful uh, uh, connection of the letters together. Uh, brings uh, a, a sound and a type of peace that comes from out of that sound. But this is not enough. We need to take it to another stage. And that is tadabbur ayatihi, that we need to reflect upon the verses. Reflect upon the signs that come out of these verses. This is the kalam Allah. These are the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to humanity. Imagine a, a book where a person, an Arabic speaking person, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, could hear one verse and accept Islam. They could just hear the connection of Alif, Lam, Mim. Three letters coming together. And then it's, it moves right into a verse and they recognize this is something beyond me. The Arab people in the early times, they knew their share, they knew their poetry. They knew very well their prose. But the Qur'an was in a sense rhymed prose. It told a story, it delivered a message, but in a perfect mathematical fashion that no human being was able to produce. So they would listen to one uh, word or one set of words and that would cause them to change their way of life. So in this, let us reflect upon a few verses. This book is filled with gems, but there are two verses that stand out just to, to show how important this is. And at this time of the month, as we are moving toward um, the, the, the first third of the, of the month of Ramadan and coming out of the first third of the month, in Surah Al-Rad, uh, in verse number 11, Allah tells us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ مِنْ وَال In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Surely Allah will not change the conditions of a people until they change that which is in themselves. And if Allah wills a punishment to come to a people, there is no turning back and they will not find beside Allah any protector. This is a crucial verse because when Muslims look today at the world and we recognize the fact that we are blessed with large numbers, we are blessed with physical wealth, we are blessed with intellectual wealth, we are blessed with countries in strategic positions. We are blessed with a powerful past. We have everything that is needed to be the leaders of humanity. But we look at the conditions of Muslims and we don't find it coming about. How could we have gone from a powerful state into a weakened state? Inna Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bianfusihim. Allah will not change the condition of a people till they change that which is in themselves. We changed something in ourselves. We stopped looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as musharriya, as the main lawgiver. We looked to physical laws, to secular laws. We stopped looking at the Prophet ﷺ as the lawgiver, but we started to look at secular law and other people as examples in our lives. We separated people based on color based on nationality, based on language. And surely we will not come out of this condition until 
we change that which is in ourself. So we need to look inside of ourselves, into our hearts, into our lives, that we can gain the benefit out of this month and come out of it as a changed nation so that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would then give us that preference that we need in this world today. In another verse, as we are looking in this section of the Qur'an, we look at Surah Al-Nahl. In the verse of the B, right in the beginning, it tells us, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ata Amrullahi Fala Tasta'jilu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Amma Yushrikun. Allah tells us the event, a sa'a, ordained by Allah, will come to pass, so do not hasten it. Glory be to Allah, above all they associate. So Allah tells us, Eta Amrullah. Eta is the past tense, fi'lan madi. But the verse is saying, when you translate it, it is saying that the event, because it's talking about the day of judgment, it will come. The day of judgment has not come yet. But the verb is the past tense. So on a human level, this might appear to be a mistake. You're using the past and you're talking about the future. But in the context of the revelation, when the Arabs listened to this, they could feel the power of it. Atta amrullah, fala tastajilu. It shows the future, but it is said in the past, and they reflected on the fact that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the past, the present, and the future are all the same. So it gives you adama, it gives you the greatness of the verse. And immediately the person would recognize these are not the words of a human being. These are the words of the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of time, the one who is not bound by limitations of the past or stuck in the present or going toward the future. We also find in Surah An-Nahl in verse 68 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in speaking to the bees, Allah tells us and it says to the bees, and your Lord inspired the bees saying, take habitations in the mountains and in the trees and in what they erect. Then eat of all the fruits and follow the ways of your Lord made easy for you. Al-Ayah. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the bees, all in the feminine. We now recognize that bees that go out are all feminine. So we reflect upon the revelation. The final part of this formula is to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, we need to follow these commands. We beautify the Qur'an, we reflect on its verses, and we follow that which Allah has commanded us. I leave you in peace. I ask Allah to give us the ability to follow this Qur'an. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.